I am an American, and in August of 2019, I traveled to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is a large island off the southeastern coast of India. When I visited there, I fell in love with its long, rich history and agreeable people with their wonderful sense of community. A year-round warm climate ensures a perpetual growing season for a large variety of fruits and vegetables. Two monsoon seasons provide the water, and the most sophisticated water system that the world has ever known keeps the water from those monsoons from going to waste. This video is about the ancient water and soil conservation ecosystem of Sri Lanka. Archaeologists place the original capital city of Anuradhapura at about 700 BC. Although in ancient stories like the saga of Dutugamanu, written about the time period of 200 BC, that also tantalizingly mentions airships and tells the tale of when the Sinhalese defeated the Tamils. The fight between these two types of people has unfortunately continued periodically even until today. The history of the island is well documented as becoming an official colony of the great Indian Emperor Ashoka when he sent his son and daughter there in about 300 BC. The royals arrived with several families, each devoted to a different discipline like arts, engineering, medicine, but the commodity that they brought that has shaped the very core of this island was Buddhism. Sri Lanka remains the only predominantly Buddhist country in the world. The Buddhist edict of do not kill and their system of merit helped to propel this island into a garden and the breadbasket of the ancient world. Their king declared that there should be a large enough system of capturing monsoon water for all the people and animals of the island. Working for the good of all gave the workers merit in their next life, something that couldn't be measured in currency. Thus began an engineering feat that encompassed the entire island with a network of vast reservoirs, canals, and earthen dams that keep the monsoon waters from being swallowed up by the sea before they are used by the people and the animals of the island. His holistic conception of water management allows for two seasons of rice a year and an amazing variety of other plants. And because the island has never known slavery, this sophisticated system was created and maintained by the community that it served. Archaeologists date the Alhira Canal at about 50 AD. It is situated in the mid-eastern quarter of the island. From there, a canal was cut all the way to the large Minaria Reservoir that is believed to be completed around 300 AD. Along the way, smaller water tanks were constructed in every village. These water tanks were paramount to the farmers who lived there. Another canal, from there the natural rivers and canals deposited any excess water to the sea by way of a port in Trincomalee. It was the great king Para Kamarula who reigned in 1123 to 1186 AD and declared, let not even a small quantity of water obtained by rain go to the sea without benefiting man. He was depicted as a simple man with no jewelry or ornamentation, but holding a book of palm leaves in his capital of Palanara. By this time, the island was a great network of canals and reservoirs, each kingdom responsible for the maintenance of their interconnected irrigation system. Families who fulfilled this vocation were called Kulamas. A complicated system of dams, sleuths, spillways, canals, and weirs still frustrates contemporary engineers who haven't unraveled the purpose of all the components of this system. And irrigation wasn't the only problem that the system solved. There was also flood control, drainage, and soil conservation. My guide, Jagath of Jagath Tours, took me on a day-long 
tour of one leg of the vast water system that stretched from the El Hero Canal all the way through the Mineria Reservoir by road and off-road by way of a jeep while we traveled across country and over elephant tracks to see for ourselves a farmer's rice field that was being watered by this system. Randeni Lake. Randeni Lake. Randeni Lake. But it is a water tank, though. It's yeah, not water natural. Tank, yeah. Okay. Water tank. And this canal is not natural. This is man-made. And the water comes to these uh, the reservoirs. Mm -hmm. There's a one. Uh, there's a huge reservoir. Maybe something like uh, 30 kilometer. No, not even 30. Maybe 20 kilometer away from called Kandalam. There's a major is major. Res and now you can see this is a spill. Now the, you see the man walking through the spill. spill oh, the I lowest, see. And then uh, it's a lower, almost it's a lower than the dam. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I asked, uh, what that farmer tried to explain me, if it is any, when the monsoon rain comes, mm -hmm. they spill the water, and going through the, uh, go to the another, uh, another w small water tank called Dambuluwe, mm -hmm. and then from there is going to another major reservoir called Kalaga. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We see other see things like it. The water go through the forest area to the next water tank, uh -huh. and then next water tank, and finally go to one of the main big reservoirs. Uh -huh. That's the way they try to avoiding the flooding. They say, you know, now we the water from this uh, small water tank, and that's a rice field, right? Yeah, this, uh, this is enough for these villages. This. This kind of a water tank, they, according to that man's expression, they said every village has such a small water tank. <laughs> you see the green, these are all rice fields. <laughs> now I will show you these clues where they release the water to the rice field. It's been rebuilt, these clues. Those days, those days, what they did is they put a huge piece of big piece of stone or wood uh -huh. instead of metal. Now we are using metal gate. And then that, that gate opens and... Yeah, this is a metal gate. Actually, this is a new one. They rebuilt it, this uh, gate. Huh. But in ancient time, they used, uh, they used a very strong piece of uh, stone. So they used the uh, uh, granite slab. Mm -hmm. Stones mm -hmm. or wood. Wood, very thick wood, piece of wood, mm -hmm. or piece of granite instead of the metal. That time they don't have metal. Mm -hmm. Okay. The water goes through the all oh, the rice fields for me. Okay, so okay. This we call irrigation canal. Uh huh. This we call irrigation canal. Go water go to the field, rice field. You see, they used the, those days they used the granite stone. Now we use the, the modern way, we use the concrete. Mm -hmm. You see, the modern, we use the concrete. Mm -hmm. But in ancient time, they used the granite. What do you think? This is the main irrigation canal. And you can see that gate, it's closed. Mm -hmm. And from there, they can uh, balance the water level. Here you can see, here is another water line. Let's see, let me get a close up of this, this the, wood. That's the way they, they use the ancient time, they use the wood, wood like that. Huh. Now, you see the wood? Mm -hmm. Or piece of granite slab. And you see there, from here. Oh, there's a little trickle of water coming yeah. underneath. The way they take the water to the rice field. Okay, right there. Later you can find it. Later. Yeah, that's the way. It's just a beginning. We will see many like that. Okay. The monsoon is filled up, up to there. Huh. It opens up a gate somehow underneath. Water through here so it can go out to the fields. 
stay on the tree house to protect the rice oh, during. Oh, so they stay up there? Yeah, all night they have to, to stay keep and from the elephants. The elephant away. What do they? This is a rice field. What do they do if they see an elephant? They 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 put the firecrackers and shouting and fireballs. Uh huh. And this is the way they take the water to the rice field. <laughs> from the you see the reservoir is over there. You see the dam. Dam. Oh, that big, oh, the dam. Yeah. Uh -huh. that, that's the dam right there. And then it goes through here. And it comes out here. And there was never anything here, or is this being rebuilt? So this, there was, a, this was here, and it, it, uh, it, it was lost. Then you rebuilt it. Are they going to put a pipeline in here, or are they going to leave it open? There's a hole. Oh, right there. I see. Right there. This must be another place they sit and watch yeah. elephants. Yeah. To the next reservoirs we call mm -hmm. the Kaudul. Mm -hmm. And from the Kaudul, they can send to Kantale and finally send to the ocean. To the drink of water. Now far away you can see the long, the uh, brown, that's the wall, the, that's earth and brown dam. wall with a, like a earth mm -hmm. wall. Mm -hmm. There's a dam of the Mineria water tank for reservoirs. Now you can see the water coming through the dam. Through the, through the screw. Yeah. Through the screw. Yeah. yeah. And the water is releasing to the irrigation canal. Both are the irrigation canal. That's the point. They are the they release the water to the irrigation canal. Dosa we call irrigation canal. And then 
from here, this is the way after that, this is the way we balance the boat. After the, after the releasing to, into the irrigation canal, they can balance the water as they want. If there is a sudden water level increasing, they can open all the sea gates. After that excursion with Jagath, I also began noticing the rainwater harvesting systems that many of the homes have, and I became aware of the extent of the irrigation system. Canals line most of the main roads. They weave through the smaller covered ditches that bring water all the way to the rice fields. Along the way, there are all these smaller reservoirs that are called tanks, and that are surrounded by at least a small patch of forest to prevent evaporation. We, we traveled to some of those smaller communities off the main roads and found children as well as adults swimming and playing there. They seem to be a natural gathering place for the community. And that is the thing. The community that built them. Those souls that labored to create and maintain those systems more than a thousand years ago, they are the ancestors of those little children who are running and jumping into the water. Those ancient people... They toiled for the sake of their families, their children, their children's children, all the way to today. There was no slave master with a whip forcing their hands. They did it for a community, a community that probably looked very much like those little children jumping in the water today. This amazing water system of Sri Lanka reinforced to me the fact that clean water is a necessity. It is becoming scarce. Climate change and pollution is already affecting our supply of it. Every year the Mississippi floods while the western states bake without rain. Why not lay tiles in the riverbanks to move that excess water to the west? We have to be able to talk about climate change and make accommodations for it now. Instead of fighting each other, we need to start building the infrastructure needed for storing this important commodity. And we have to stop polluting groundwater. It's too important to waste. No drop of water was to be wasted. If these ancient people could begin and succeed in transforming their island into a tropical paradise more than 2,000 years ago, why can't we make real change like this for the good today? Why does profit have to be the only motivator for us here in the States? Let's change that to community. How about our family becoming our prime motivator? Why not have more rainwater catchment systems in the states? This is something we can do. These systems should be common, at the very least for flushing toilets and gardens. Why not? One thing is certain. We can't wait for someone to do it for us. We need to become proactive. We need to do what is right individually so that collectively we can solve these problems. Why not labor for the betterment of our community, for our families? We could succeed. Maybe we will have to work for free, but the issue of clean water has to be addressed. Let's do it now. Why not?